So now we need to create a few more threads. So one might think we would just copy this over and cut this again, but that wouldn't be the right way to do it. What you need to do is think outside the box, literally outside the box. I want this thread to be continuous. So if the distance across this line and between these curves makes one thread, what I need to do is extend this out further for a second, a third, and a fourth thread. So here's what we're going to do for that. We are still set to our tilted plane, so we're still looking down that center line view on the face of this curve. And we're going to tell it to do a transform translate. I'm going to zoom up real quick on this and select the geometry that makes up that curve. I'll hit F2 to unzoom back to where I was. I'll hit Enter to end my selection, and I'll tell it that I'm going to make four more of these. I want to copy these, and I want to move these between points. I want to move it from point at the end point here to a point at the end point here. And it extends those curves out in that direction. And we're going to OK this. Now we want to add to our geometry. So I'll click on Geometry. In my Chain Manager, I'll right-click and tell it I want to add a chain, and I'll pick all of these. Now make sure you're picking them all from the same direction. They all need to flow the same way. And with those selected, we're going to say OK, OK here, and Regenerate. And now we have four of them wrapped up. So you might want to go to Verify again to see what that's going to look like. So this is what I have when I run this in Verify. And it looks good. We've got a nice smooth transition going around and around and around. But you see here it gets to the final transition and it just ends abruptly. And that's where it reverses to go back. Well, we might want this to be a little smoother when it gets to the end. So the thread kind of tapers off. And we can do that too. Let's close the simulator. I'm going to rotate this around a little bit so that I can see the final curve out here, and I'm going to zoom in around that curve. And remember, we're still set to our tilted construction plane. So I'm going to go back to Transform, Translate again. I'm going to pick this with a window, and hit Enter to end my selection. Again, I want to make copies. This time I'm going to tell it I want to make three copies. I want those copies spaced in Z, minus an inch and a half, so that moves them out further. But I also want to move them up in Y, and I'm going to set that to 0.3. So they move out and they move up at the same time. I'm going to right-click and do a dynamic rotation. Now this allows me to pick the point I'm rotating around so that I could see a little bit better how that slopes up. We're going to OK this. We're going to click on our geometry, and in my Chain Manager, I'm going to right-click and add more chains. I'm going to add this one, this one, and this one, and we're going to OK that, OK here. I'm going to start by doing a fit, and then I'm going to zoom in around where I know my rotary part's going to be, and we'll regenerate this. Now we can take another look at this in Verify. So here's what I have, and again, remember, you can turn off your tool if you don't want to see your tool at this point. You can see when it gets to that final thread how it raises up and slopes off. So this is much easier than trying to create a 3D solid model of this part and then trying to figure out how to do a multi-axis toolpath to cut this thread. This is direct and to the point. And now that I have this all proven out, I can very simply go back into that one toolpath and change that step over from a hundred thousandths to maybe thirty thousandths or fifty thousandths, whatever is going to be appropriate to get it as smooth as I need it. Just another example of how you can do a flat layout and turn it into a rotary toolpath. In this case, a 3D rotary toolpath.